You guys love the Portugal Megalopolis video, I think it was actually the quickest video ever to get to 250,000 views, so as requested, here is one about Europe's Megalopolises. Is Megalopolises the correct plural? Anyway, a quick reminder, a megalopolis, also called a mega region, is a group of metropolitan areas which are perceived as continuous or semi-continuous urban areas through common systems of transport, economy, resources, among others. They are integrated enough that some coordinating policy can be valuable, although the constituent metropolises, the big cities, keep their individual identities. So what are Europe's megalopolises? There are officially seven of them, four are known as banana due to the shape they take, which remind us of a banana or a boomerang. In total, they are home to an estimated 283 million people, Europe has roughly 470 million people, so that's almost 40% of the total population of the continent, in an area that certainly takes up much less percentage of the total European territory. Let's list them out and then go into each one with more detail. From most to least populated, Europe's mega regions are the blue banana, the golden banana, Banana, also known as the Sun Belt, the Green Banana, the Orange Banana, the String, the Atlantic Axis, and the Gulf of Finland. These are Europe's population hotspots and necessarily their economic hotspots too, as a general rule people live where the jobs are. Let's zoom in and learn a little more about each of them. First, the blue banana, counting up to 130 million people living in it. It stretches from Wales, England, over the English Channel, into the Netherlands, Belgium, Western and Southern Germany, Luxembourg, Eastern France, Switzerland, and Northern Italy. In England, it includes cities and respective urban areas such as Liverpool, Manchester, Nottingham, and London. In the Netherlands, Belgium, and Luxembourg, it covers essentially the entire countries. In France, only Strasbourg, Lille, and part of Paris's urban area, although some maps exclude the capital city, there's a whole debate about this, about whether or not they should be included. In Germany, it's mostly the Rhineland and the south, with the regions of Rhein-Ruhr, Frankfurt, Stuttgart, Munich, and Nuremberg. In Switzerland, it covers mostly the whole country too, but the key cities here are Zurich and Basel, while in Italy, it reaches into the north with the cities of Turin, Milan, and Venice. The concept of it, which eventually led to all of the other ones on this list, was first established in 1989, when French geographer Roger Brunet observed a division between active and passive spaces within Europe and developed the concept of a West European backbone. He referenced an urban corridor of industry and services which stretched from northern England to northern Italy, calling it the Liverpool-Milan axis. But as you can imagine, a lot has changed since 1989. In recent years, the blue banana has been shifting north towards Germany due to urbanization. The mega region has become larger in size, branching outwards in a star shape, if you will. It still holds Europe's largest gathering of people, industry, money, and economic power. The reason why these areas are so populated, I think, has to do with the initial presence of natural resources in them, which in turn led to the establishment of industry, the building of cities around those industries, and even if today the extraction and manufacturing aren't as relevant to the economy of the regions, the cities were already there and transitioned into the modern economy without switching places. Then we move south to the Golden Banana, which is also known by some as the Sun Belt. Actually, the US has a bunch of regions known as specific belts. Let me know if you want a video about those too, they're pretty interesting. The Golden Banana is an area of high population density lying between Cartagena in the west and Genoa in the east along the coast of the Mediterranean Sea. It was first conceptualized in 1995 in a report made by the European Union. Inside it live up to 45 million Europeans, it stretches over the borders of five different countries. In Spain, it includes cities like Girona, Barcelona, Valencia or Alicante, covering the entire country of Andorra and Monaco as well, then reaching into southern France in Nice, Toulon, Marseille, Nîmes, Montpellier, Narbonne and Perpignan. 
It then arrives in Italy where it reaches into Turin and Genoa. The region is characterized by its importance in activities related to the information and communication technologies, in terms of quality of life, and as a top travel and tourism destination. At any rate, the golden banana can also be understood as an extension of the blue banana over the Mediterranean arc. In fact, the eastern end of it coincides with the southern end of the blue banana. The connecting factor for it specifically seems to be precisely the Mediterranean coast and the opportunities that presents. Next is yet another banana, the green one, some people call it the pickle too, apparently, with a very similar population count of between 40 to 45 million people. This one exists in Central Europe, in fact it's also sometimes called precisely the Central Europe Megalopolis. It's not the biggest in size or population, but it matches the largest number of countries that the blue banana has as well, 8 of them. Poland, Czechia, Slovakia, Austria, Hungary, Croatia, Slovenia, and also Italy. I believe Italy is the only European country that is part of three different mega regions, and all of them kind of intercepting in the same place, northern Italy, which to be fair is where most Italian people live and where the country's industry is concentrated. If we look at a population density and GDP distribution map of Italy, this becomes very clear. Because the countries it includes are reasonably small, most of its major member cities are capital ones, six to be precise, Zagreb, Ljubljana, Budapest, Vienna, Bratislava and Warsaw, other main cities like Gdansk and Krakow are also a part of it. I would say Poland is the only country that has a lot of member cities, other ones just have their capital. Three of them, Vienna, Bratislava and Budapest, are also known as the Golden Triangle due to their beauty, tourism potential and close proximity. The region as a whole connects the Baltic Sea to the Adriatic Sea in some maps, crossing the Danube River as well. Moving to the last banana on this list is the orange banana out east. The smallest of them, it only has 30 million people, but it's still a respectable number. It includes four countries, Ukraine, Romania, Bulgaria and Turkey and goes around the Black Sea coast. Within those countries, the megalopolis is said to include the cities of Odessa, Constanta, Varna and Burgas and finally reaching into Istanbul, which represents most of the population count. It's important to note that this is the most debatable of these mega regions. There's very little research and information available on it other than a Wikipedia listing. Sure, these are all areas that are connected by some decent population density and they have the Black Sea coast factor that is common to all of them and I guess unites them, but the existence of a common connecting infrastructure, at least on land, is debatable, especially because opposed to other mega regions, some of its members don't have freedom of movement between them. The common concentration here seems to be the Black Sea and the resources and trading opportunities it presents. Then in Northern Europe and Scandinavia we have the string. Counting with 14 million people, it stretches into four different countries. Starting in Northern Germany with the cities of Hamburg and Kiel, it then goes into Denmark where it takes up most of the country with the capital region of Copenhagen, Jutland and then Southern Denmark. It then crosses the small bodies of water that divide Denmark and Sweden and moves into the latter covering Gothenburg, Elsinborg and Malmo, arguably reaching into Stockholm too, but most maps don't include the capital city. Some maps exclude Norway too, like the one I used for the thumbnail, but most experts agree that it should be included as part of the string mega region, stretching into Oslo and the region of Viken. Here is an example of a mega region that can't really be explained as a whole. We would have to go into each of the countries and try to understand individual population concentration causes. In northern Germany, I guess it's the sea proximity and the opportunities that the northern sea access presents. Denmark is all part of it. And then in Sweden and Norway, I guess it has to do with terrain and weather, with the southern areas of each country being the most suitable for settling also due to the proximity of the Baltic coast and similarly to the previous mega region and its connection to the Black Sea or the golden bananas proximity to the Mediterranean, the trading and resource opportunities that this presents. Back south, we have the one I mentioned in a previous video, the Atlantic Axis. I saw a comment somewhere saying we should really be careful calling something in Europe an axis. I would maybe say that a rebranding would be useful here. It connects central and northern Portugal with the Spanish autonomous region of Galicia, 
through the cities of Setúbal, Lisbon, Santarém, Leiria, Coimbra, Viseu, Aveiro, Porto, Braga, Viana do Castelo, Vigo, Orense, Pontevedra, Santiago de Compostela, and Coruña, reaching a total of up to 12 million people. I won't get too much into it here because I literally did an entire video about it. The concentration of people essentially has to do with historical factors, topography, weather, and other political and economical reasons. And finally, the last mega region in Europe is the Gulf of Finland. With 7 million people, it covers a series of Finnish, Estonian, and Russian cities that all face the Gulf of Finland body of water. Although with recent events, practical connection with the Russian part of it is a little debatable, while the connection between the parts of Finland and Estonia are more evident, especially because they're just closer together, being across the water from each other. And still, it's an area of general urbanization and population concentration. In Finland, it includes the cities of Kotka, Kovula, Espoo, the capital of Helsinki, Vanta, Lapanranta, and Lati, in Estonia the capital city of Tallinn, as well as Narva and Tartu, and in Russia the cities of Gacina, St. Petersburg, Viborg, and Sosnovibor. The presence of natural resources, the suitable terrain, and the potential for trade explain the population concentration in the area. So, those are the megalopolises or mega regions of Europe. Do you agree with these groupings? I for one think the inclusion of England in the blue banana is a little questionable, considering there's a large body of water separating it, but so does the Gulf of Finland, so maybe that's a little hypocritical on my end. In addition, do you think we should differentiate a concept of mega region, such as these definitely are, versus a megalopolis, with the latter being a more truly unified megacity without breaks in between the constituent cities? Plus, do you think any other groups of large urban areas are missing? Maybe some type of purple banana in the Western Balkans? Let me know in the comments. Thanks so much for watching this video, subscribe if you want to catch future ones, and I will see you next time for more general knowledge.